Hi, this is Sarah with Wishes Family Travel, and we took a tour with blue Hawaiian helicopters on Kauai. At check-in, you will be weighed, and the team members will assign you a seat based on the weight displacement in the helicopter. Do provide lockers for you to store your gear, because all that is allowed is your camera and sunglasses. Please be sure you follow Blue Hawaiian's instructions to wear black, as this will cut down on the glare from the windows when you're trying to take your photos. There will be a safety briefing and then each guest will be fitted with a flotation device that is worn on the right hip. Alright, let me get some calls. We're going to get out of here and once we're out of we can chat a little bit more. I do turn off these microphones just for the takeoffs and landings. Alrighty folks, we have been cleared for takeoff. And we are rolling. Folks, we're going to climb up over the break ball here. We'll just continue our climb through 1,500 feet up to 2,000. As we cross the break wall, you can look off the right side. This is the main harbor for the island of Kauai, so this is where all the goods are shipped in. You can also see the big cruise ship down there, and that's Pride of America that comes in on a weekly basis. These are called the Ho'upu Mountains. South of the Niamalo Stream, off our right front, you can see where it zigs and then zags. Right about where it zags there, that fish pond, that is man-made. That was built there by the early Hawaiians. It's called the Alacoco Fish Pond. Alright, we'll level off here at 2,000 feet. We're already there. Uh, we're going to continue westbound. Lots of movies from here on Kauai, and I have turned on the microphones. The uh, first couple of movies I'd like to mention, just real quick. Uh, a little movie called The Descendants. Did anybody see that one? Okay, good. <laughs> Uh, there was a scene in the movie where George Clooney drives up with his movie family in a jeep, remember that? They get up to a point, look down into this beach property, and they lament about the good times they had. That scene was shot right where that road goes through the saddle there, and the beach they're looking at is right over there. It's called Kipukai. Also for you Jurassic Park fans, the second Jurassic Park movie, that opening scene where a couple are on the beach sipping champagne, and then the little girl, remember, she wanders up the beach into the tree line and gets attacked by those rat-sized dinosaurs that was shot on that beach as well. This is where they shot the scene in the movie where the helicopter flies up this valley, gets up to the waterfall, descends down the face of the waterfall and lands right there at the base of the falls back to deliver the paleontologist to the park. That movie released in 1992, so well, actually 93 here so getting a little bit dated Unfortunately not. Uh, reason being is the property is all private and the people who own the property have chosen not to allow the general public in here. Uh, so who owns this? Uh, the Robinson family. 
I'll go into them here a little bit. We'll make our turn. I can point some things out. These are, again, called the Kihili Falls. Always flowing, always beautiful. I have never seen these waterfalls even come close to drying up. Always gorgeous. You can see uh, the topography has a lot to do with it, also the abundant rainfall. Property, this uh, property owned, as I said, by the Robinson family, and it's been in their family for about 150 years. The current owners are Bruce and Keith Robinson. This uh, property originally purchased by their great-great-grandmother. Her name was Elizabeth Sinclair. And she bought all of this property after first purchasing the island of Nihihau, which is a little island located just off the southwest coast of Kauai, 71 square miles. And uh, she bought that island back in 1864 for $10,000 in gold. Now, that was considered a lot of money back then. She bought it from King Kamehameha V. Uh, the islands were ruled as a monarchy at the time. And then later, about uh, four or five years later, they came here and purchased all of this land. 45,000 acres is kind of shaped like a big wedge of pie with the base located over there on the shoreline. And the uh, point, the apex, located at the very top of the island, the summit of Alkawaikini. Basically what it means is they promise never to, to uh, subdivide or, or seek to develop or otherwise change this property. And so the state of Hawaii gets what they want. It keeps this property as watershed. And you can see as we continue westbound how the terrain begins to change, how it begins to dry out, become more arched looking. And that is because we're now flying into the leeward side of the island or the dry side. This is now Koke State Park. Now this forested area below us is used primarily for recreational hunting, also fishing. That's, uh, that's called the Pu'ulua Reservoir off our right side. They stock that with rainbow trout. Over here on the left hand side is Barking Sands Naval Air Station. That's the only large military facility on this island. Most of the military is on either the Big Island or Oahu. And then again the island of Nihihau. Not much going on out there on Nihihau. It's about 71 square miles. Um, it's uh, also called the Forbidden Island because the Robinsons forbid anybody from going there. There's only, I guess there's only about 50 people that live there. Those people are off the grid. They get all their electricity from generator or solar panels. And, tight, and then uh, the water is by catchment. This is called Makaha Ridge now. The left side of the aircraft is the Makaha tracking station, that's a remote radar site that operates with Barking Sands. So they track all that activity out of Barking Sands, in and out of Bark Barking Sands. The uh, forested area, they did. Uh, this is all designated for hunting, so each ridge has an, a letter designation and they uh, conduct, or they allow the hunters to come, come back here. This section, however, has been fenced off because it's been overgrazed in the past, so they're trying to recover it. The three animals they hunt, feral pig, feral goat, and black-tailed deer, those three animals. None of which are native to the Hawaiian Islands. They've all been brought in from different places at different times. Alright folks, we are approaching the Nepali coast, so we're going to go offshore here just uh, just a little ways, and then we'll turn and beach in, uh, so both sides can get this view looking up towards the north, okay? So here we go. This is called Nolulu Valley off our right front, below us, and to the front of a, of a Puhi. First beach we get to is called Hunapu, and you can see there is a rock arch that goes up over the beach. Right down there. About 60 feet high, and it does connect the two halves of the beach. Now this is where they shot scenes with Johnny Depp for Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. Also, the uh, scenes in Six Days, Seven Nights towards the end of the movie where Anne Nash and Harrison Ford are being chased by...
on the uh, sea caves, these, uh, all these sea caves along this section of the Nepali uh, formed originally as rivers of lava. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, how can that be, but rivers of lava forming lava tubes. Let's start a turn here. That's called Makuna Ridge out the right side, also known as Bali High from the movie South Pacific, filmed here in the late 50s. So this is now the entire Nepali coast stretching from Milali'i off our right side to Ke'e off our left side. That's about 14 miles. Switches then at Ka turns into the North Shore of Kauai. North Shore extending from Ka all the way up to Kilauea. A little hard to see Kilauea, but it's right there, the peninsula with a little island at the tip. That's the Kilauea National Wildlife Refuge. Ka also known as End of the Road, so this section uh, from here uh, is actually starting up there at Hanalei which is just past Luma High Beach. That's where the road closure occurred, so none of this is accessible by by uh, road. Are these private homes? These are all private homes, yes. Wainiha is the next community up. It goes up the valley. And that's a little more owner-occupied then. Princeville off the front of the aircraft. St. Regis Hotel. Just to the right of the St. Regis, the mouth of the Hanalei River. And then next to that, the uh, old historic Hanalei Pier. the south. If you look way out in the distance there, you can see the Ho'upu Mountains. Those are the mountains we flew out on in the beginning of the tour. That kind of gives you an idea of where we're at. And it also gives you an idea of how big the island is. Not very big. 24 miles north to southeast to west is about 36 miles. 543 square miles. And if you were to compare the size of this island with the big island, the big island is about eight times larger than this island. Two-thirds the size of Oahu. This side of the island, very lush, very green. Uh, once again, about 300 inches in this area. Uh, lots of moisture streaming down both sides of the valley. This is Hanalei Valley with the river, the Hanalei River. So we're going to proceed now to the back of Hanalei, the mountain rising up into the clouds. That is Mount Waiale Ale and Mount Kawaikini. Uh, two summits marking the two extreme ends of the crater rim. So, shaped just like that up there on top with the two extreme ends of the crater. Then it opens up into a V-cut on the northeast side. So what we're going to do is cross over the ridge and we'll approach it from the northeast side and we'll enter this old extinct volcanic crater called Waiale Ali Crater. Yeah. 5,243 feet. Uh, the uh, uh, right between the two summits on the crater rim is the rain gauge. And that's where they measure the record rainfall. And that is sometimes as much as 450 inches per year. Now the way this area got its name, there used to be a trail that ran along this ridge and went all the way to the top. The early Hawaiians would climb up there and pray, make offerings to the god Kane. They had several gods. Kane was one of the major ones. And they would go up there and pray at a heiau. A heiau is a raised stone platform. They built it up there for that purpose. Right next to the Heiau uh, is a small pond, and as the wind blow, would blow over the surface of the pond, it would make the water ripple. The Hawaiian word for rippling waters is Waialeale. So that's how this area got its name. So 
what you're looking at is the crater rim is above the cloud line actually. It goes around in a half circle again and then opens up into this V-cut in the side which allows us to actually fly inside. be on the ground in just a couple of minutes and I do want to thank everybody for flying with me today. Once again my name is Mark. I hope you enjoyed the tour. You can